Hi, I'm here with Megan Buttinger, curator for the George Washington Foundation. We're in historic Kenmore, and she's going to tell us a little bit about the dining room table. Megan, why don't you explain to us uh, what these items are that you've used to set the table and why you chose them? First of all, everything that we use in the house as far as ceramics and glassware goes um, are based on archaeological finds. So for instance, we have these really large uh, white salt glazed stoneware chargers, and each one has a different pattern rim. This particular one is called barley corn. This is the corn and this is mm -hmm. the barley. And um, it's a fragment, it, that pattern is on a fragment that we found archeologically on the property, so we specifically collected this charger for that purpose. So I noticed that the silverware has a funky green handle. Tell me a little bit about that. The silverware that we have on the table is, for instance, this is a three-time fork, uh, very common for the time period, and you're right, it does have this sort of strange green handle on it. Um, these are actually identified in Fielding Lewis's 1782 probate inventory. Um, it says that the table was set with green bone handled utensils, and that's what this is. This uh, handle is made out of bone or ivory that has been dyed green. Um, it's a little unusual to our eyes today, but it was very common in the 18th century. Bone-handled silverware could also be dyed red, blue, sometimes even purple. So there were lots of options out there for your colored handled silverware. Okay, so Megan, I've heard of sauce boats, I've heard of butter pots, but this little guy right here is a butter boat. That is correct. This is actually a little piece that we just acquired a few months ago. It is a butter boat. And that's a form that is identified in the probate inventory. Um, it's the probate inventory lists one butter boat as being in the dining room closet. And so we acquired this piece to fulfill the probate inventory. Um, it's obviously a lot smaller than the typical sauce boat um, that we also have sitting on the table. Um, we used a sauce boat in the 18th century much like we do today. It just holds gravy or other sauces for whatever was on, on the dinner plate. Um, we assume that the butter boat acted much the same way that um, it held butter instead of sauce, and um, it uh, could just be used to add a little bit to whatever the dish was on your plate. Um, it's a little bit of a conundrum, though, because we haven't been able to find out anything about how 18th century people use butter boats on their dining room table specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so there is one solitary butter boat listed in the probate inventory, um, but as you can see, it's very tiny, and yes. it seems odd that you would only have one of these sitting on your dining table, especially if you had a group of visitors. Um, so the question is, would there have been more than one? Were they made in sets that you would purchase? Um, did you acquire them individually and collect different patterns? Um, we're not sure. We just, and we aren't quite sure how they operated on the 18th century dining table, uh, but we do have the one example to fil fulfill the listing in the probate inventory. I noticed that we have punch bowls on the table, but they have food in them. So what's going on with that? You are correct. Yes, these two uh, bowls right here are actually uh, punch bowls. That's what they were called in the 18th century. That's how they were sold and the people that made them referred to them as, as punch bowls as well. In our case here at Kenmore, uh, we actually found tin glazed earthenware fragments exhibiting very similar patterns to these in our archeological finds. 18th century people were just like us, and sometimes you used a vessel for something other than its intended purpose. We often drink tea out of coffee mugs. So if you had a bowl and you needed a bowl to serve up from the table, then punch bowl might stand in that place. All right.